The math of this is pretty straightforward and pretty simple. Uh, more than a third of all Canadians live in the province of Ontario, but the province of Ontario represents more than 40% of Canada's economy. The backbone of Ontario's economy is manufacturing, and the backbone of the manufacturing sector is the auto sector. So, and we all understand the numbers as well, that the auto sector represents close to half a million jobs right here in the province of Ontario, direct and indirect jobs. That's why it's very important that all levels of government and the private sector work together, that we listen, that we cooperate, and we put together an environment that will lead to investment, job creation, innovation for the long term for all of the benefit of Canada's economy. And that's why it's really important and very impressive that Ray Tange, formerly uh, the president and chairman of Toyota, will chair this committee and serve as Canada's auto advisor to both the federal and the provincial governments. In filling this role, Ray will provide a crucial advice on potential new automotive mandates that can come to Canada. He will do so by providing essential industry intelligence collected through his decades of experience as an expert from the auto sector itself and with deep knowledge of the industry, both from an Ontario footprint, but also globally. Ray will operate within the Canadian Automotive Partnership Council, the industry-led committee that addresses the key competitive issues that are facing Canada's automotive sector. And Ray will lead the committee within the Canadian Automotive Partnership Council to focus on what actions and policies and decisions that we need to make to not only ensure that we maintain our leadership role in the automotive sector, but that we look to the future and attract new investments. And this builds on the suite of policies that Canada has put in place to attract new investments to Canada, such as the Automotive Supplier Innovation Program that we announced this year, $100 million in new investment into the auto sector, as well as the Automotive Innovation Fund, which has leveraged more than $2.8 billion into Canada's GDP since we announced it back in 2008. And of course, the accelerated capital cost allowance extended to 10 years in this year's federal budget. But you know, as Brad said, Ray is considered one of the most respective auto executives in the industry today. Ray will have a direct line to both Minister Duguid Duga and myself, and we look forward to his advice and counsel. But I also want to conclude with this. You know, when the recession hit back in the third quarter of 2008, Canada's major automakers were facing bankruptcy, and we were confronted with a tough choice, which was we could stand still and hope for the best, or we could work together, take action, and protect Canada's auto industry going forward. And that's what we did. We worked together, we listened, we sought the best advice, and we protected Canada's auto sector for the past few years. And going forward, we have to work together and not only protect the gains that we've made, but ensure that Canada's auto sector has a bright future and a co and competitive dynamic moving forward that will create jobs, lead to investment, and create security for Canada's economy as we move forward. And this announcement is a key pillar in that to have somebody of Ray's stature who, by the way, was on the doorstep to retirement, to have someone of his stature to be drawn back in and to provide us advice and to help us lead going forward to secure a, a sound auto sector moving forward is a tremendous investment of his time, his effort, and his expertise back to Canada. So, Ray, I want to thank you very much for taking on this leadership role. We look forward to working with you, and I would like you to come forward now and say a few words. Ray Tange. So we all know that uh, during the financial crisis, the auto industry dropped dramatically from 17 million down to about 8 or 9 million units in the United States. So it means that there was a lot of struggle. But the good thing is that the auto industry is back on its feet. Now the market is as strong as ever. There are investments that are taking place everywhere. Our plants are fully utilized at the present time. And a lot of people are working over time. So this all good news, and we should all celebrate the fact that the auto industry is that strong. But when we look underneath, we were concerned that we weren't getting the same level of investment as we did in the past. The percentage of investment compared to Mexico and the southern states were very concerning for us. And we want to bring it back to figure out what we need to do to put Ontario and Canada on the map. So that's why we, uh, this time we didn't make five or six recommendations. We made one recommendation. One recommendation that we create an auto investment committee or board to be able to work hand in hand with the uh, two ministers and their departments so that we can strengthen the auto industries and try to find ways of how to compete with other jurisdictions. As you know, like uh, Don mentioned, everywhere you go, everybody wants those jobs. Everybody wants the investment. So our job is to try to find, uh, find out, first of all, how I can help the two ministers and their departments. Number two is how I can 
also help in the outreach of global investment outside North America. So I know that personally I've been on the site selection before in my previous role as a, as a president of, uh, of Toyota, but I also know what, it, what uh, the decision makers are lo looking for, so I'm hoping I can bring that kind of insight. And thirdly is we want to, to recognize the challenges we have, the opportunities, and we need to make some recommendation of what we need to change in order for us to compete and get a job. But today I'm here and I'm glad to, to, to cooperate, collaborate, and to try to develop a very proactive strategy of how we're going to attract new investment in Ontario and Canada. That's my new job.